Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. Today we're checking out the Mobiscribe origin and we're doing an in-depth review. So let's dig in. And here we are. So this is the Mobiscribe origin. And before I begin, I just like to say that, you know, Mobiscribe origin isn't really like an everyday average e-ink tablet. That much becomes very, very clear even before you open up the package. As soon as you get the box, you're welcome with the eco-friendly packaging, yet it has really good uh, kind of illustrations. And it just kind of, I don't know, it has a nice approach that at least for me it put me in a good mood before i even opened the box so that's something that was already like a nice announcement of what kind of a device we are supposed to be uh, encountering here generally speaking we're used to three standards uh, as far as the note taking uh, e-ink world goes um, we have 7.8 inch portable devices such as the nova series from books or the a6 or A6X from Supernote. Then we have like an overall standard, which is the 10.3 inches. Majority of devices are 10.3 inches. And then we have the big boys, which are the 13.3 inches, such as Quirk Logic Paper or um, Books Max series. Folks at Mobiscribe, uh, apparently weren't bothered by these standards when they created the origin. Um, it seems that they had a very clear idea and a goal that they wanted this device, the origin, to achieve. And as such, it's of an unusual and a unique size because it is uh, of a format of 6.8 inch diagonal. So smaller than Nova, but larger than small six inch e-ink readers. That's the first interesting point, but let's check out the overall design and build quality. Now, when I first encountered um, the uh, origin, for me, the first impression wasn't small as in constraining. For me, it was this, feels right for some reason without even powering it up it just kind of looked and felt right i think it takes quite a bit of guts and uh, know-how to have a vision and to have an idea and then go ahead with something that's not a standard but you know uh, that it would fit your product vision very, very well. And that's basically what the Mobiscribe Origin is doing with this smaller format. The front is not flush and it is not glass. Uh, instead, we have a screen colored frame with a very, very small indentation uh, where the screen goes. So the first thing that is really, really important for me that the screen frame is screen colored. For me, that's a hugely important thing to have and it does reflect the overall impression of the device. If this was white, the screen would appear darker. If this was black, the screen would appear smaller, etc., etc. This is the way it should be done. People at Remarkable figured it out and employed it with Remarkable 2. Now the Mobiscribe Origin also employed this strategy and I honestly hope that more and more manufacturers start employing this because it is hugely beneficial for e-ink devices. Now, I don't know about you, but when I see an indentation from a frame down to a screen, by default, I go, oh no, because it usually causes some sort of a problem with interaction with the OS and things like that. The origin is different because this in indentation is barely one millimeter tall. Interacting with the icons, even when they are in the corners, is extremely easy and precise. That was another positive surprise for me as well. Back and sides are of a lovely matte gray color and the material is probably plastic. Yeah, for sure, some kind of a uh, polymer of some sort, but it's extremely pleasant to touch it's not slippery, it's not sticky, it's a little bit kind of softish feel, but it just generally feels very, very comfortable. It feels like a modern and a high quality product, in spite of it being made out of plastic and without using brittle materials such as aluminum and glass, which we usually associate.
associate with high quality devices. The back is also designed in a very, very lovely minimalistic way, but enough details to make it stand out, for me at least. And it's mainly because of the shapes and this indentation here are just the right balance between visual appear and functionality. I really, really appreciate it when uh, somebody creates a good and thoughtful design. Now, they could have gone uh, ahead with a, you know, regular kind of route, which is this is a tablet, so just give it a bucket on the on the back and, you know, slap on a logo and that's it. But they didn't. A bit of extra thought obviously went into this and a bit of extra care also in, went into designing every bit of this back of the device. Um, and you can actually see this because when you use the device, these curves uh, sit really, really well in the hand and it makes it ex incredibly uh, comfortable to use. It's really, really like molds into the hand and it just is very, very lovely to use. This, of course, improves the ergonomics of the device when you're holding it. But usually this kind of curved design introduces uh, two problems. First of all is that when you are writing on a flat surface, when a device has those curves, they tend to kind of wobble around and don't have a firm contact with the surface on the ground. Well, they've remedied this because Mobiscribe Origin has this flat surface here. So you have curves to fit the hand, and then you have a very large flat surface right here, which ensures that when the device is sitting on the desk and you're writing, the area where the pressure is during the writing is actually this area here. So it's supported and it's very, very unlikely that you're going to have some kind of really weird uh, tilting of the device, which is definitely not the case with majority of the devices out there. So really, really thoughtful design. And additionally, this soft uh, kind of, it's not fully on rubberized, but it is softer type of uh, uh, plastic here that's um, not only matte and pleasant to the touch, but it's also not slippery, which means that when you put it uh, even on a slippery surface, it doesn't move all over the place, which again ensures that your comfort levels while taking notes is at an optimal level. So quite a lot of thought went into designing this, and I really, really appreciate that. On the top, you will find an orange button, which is the power on off toggle button and another button, which is a gray one, which is for toggling the front light on or off. Another example of the thoughtfulness of the design. We have nothing on either of the sides of the device. And at the bottom, we have a USB-C connection for data uh, transfer and charging and a micro SD slot for storage expansion and backups. Very, very cool. At 228 grams, it's very light and comfortable to use in one hand, making it super easy to take notes in your lap or in your hand, even for extended periods of use. Overall, I'm thoroughly impressed by the Mobiscribe Origins design and build quality. It looks like and feels like a high quality modern device, which for the price point, which is $250 for the bundle packaging now, uh, it's a very nice thing to see. Now, one note on the pricing point. In my unboxing, I mentioned the price of $160 or $170. That was a pre-order price. So pre-order price is of course now gone and the full retail price of the device and the bundle now is $200. $150. But even at that price point, it offers a great design and great build quality. Mobiscribe Origin is powered by a quad core 1.8 gigahertz uh, CPU. It has at its disposal two gigabytes of RAM and built in 32 gigabytes of storage. However, it also has that micro SD slot at the bottom, which means that it can be upgraded, uh, that storage can be upgraded by micro SD cards. And I've been testing out this one, which is 200 gigabytes, and it actually recognizes it without a problem. So yeah, 
you can have <laughs> insane amount of storage on this little dude. The screen is the uh, unique 6.8 inch size. Uh, it runs the resolution of 1440 by 1080, which roughly translates at around 265 ppi. The density of the resolution of the image itself sits somewhere between a 10.3 inch device and a 7.8 inch device. It is equipped with a dual front light, which uh, of course can be controlled, uh, the intensity can be controlled, and it is both blue and amber color light. It has Wi-Fi, but only 2.4 gigahertz uh, networks supported. It doesn't have a Bluetooth and it's running on Android 8.1 under the hood. Origin is primarily a digital notebook with e-reader capabilities, but it's best to think of it as a highly portable yet powerful digital notebook. As such, it's uh, quite responsive for general user interface type of things when you're jumping from mode to mode or opening notes or dealing with these kinds of things or opening books. It performs really well when you're just swiping through pages and just working with it. As a normal reader, it has overall, it has more more than adequate and good uh, functionality. There are areas, however, where the performance will sometimes, occasionally, get sluggish a little bit. So, for example, if you're loading up a much heavier notebook, uh, when you're opening it up for the first time, it can take a little bit of time to maybe redraw some of the strokes. Let's see if I can try and... Nope, I can't really reproduce it here. Let's try and open up a bigger one here. No, this this time it's actually dealing with it very nicely. It's kind of difficult to uh, reproduce. As you can see, when you're do doing these normal kind of operations, it's perfectly fine and it just works as you would expect it to be. So this is a 26 page uh, notebook and I'm able to kind of flip between pages without any problems. So perfectly capable device. But sometimes I did encounter, especially with the drawings, that it would kind of, when I open up the notebook, it would kind of redraw them and then it's done and ready. So for that you have this little icon that appears here if you can swear if you can see that it's viewing no and the pen is crossed out. Well that basically means that while that icon is showing you are not able to draw because it's redrawing these things. And even if, when I did run into uh, like an issue of that it's redrawing we're talking about half a second just so that you know what we're talking about. But you do visually see it redrawing some of the strokes. And yeah, mainly it's uh, on a very, very complicated page, or if it's a drawing of some sort, because we tend to use a lot more uh, strokes when we draw. The other area where uh, Origin is a little bit slower is the OCR functionality, but only the initial conversion and recognition. So generally speaking, the OCR recognition or handwriting to text recognition and conversion is really precise and effective. Extremely impressive the, the end results that you actually get. Um, but it is also a little bit slow during that initial recognition. However, the good news here is that you need to do it only once per notebook. After the initial recognition, each subsequent access to an already converted notebook will be instantaneous. Not only that, but if you go into a search and you go to search for a uh, uh, word, specific word, uh, in a notebook that has already been uh, OCR'd, so to speak, the search recognition and the search performance is again instantaneous. So to summarize the OCR performance, the initial conversion does take time and it's something that you need to account for, but after that initial recognition, each subsequent access to an already converted notebook is pretty much instantaneous and the conversion results seem to be saved along with the notebook, which is really, really awesome to see. Opening the PDF documents or no notebooks like this. this, this is a heavier document with a lot of images, but handling the regular type of documents is fine and it performs as you would expect it to. Uh, opening EPUBs also, generally speaking, works well, but occasionally uh, with a heavier EPUB, I will, yes, I will run into this issue that I have now. Now, I'm not sure what happened here or how, but I am no longer able to reopen this EPUB. Oh, no, sorry. There we go. It was just 
taking its sweet time. If you are dealing with a much heavier type of a document, which has a lot of drawings as this one does, uh, then it can uh, get bogged down. When it does open it and when you're dealing with ebook formatting types of things and just navigating the ebook itself, even with the drawings there, uh, the pinch to zoom works, the scaling works and all the navigation, it just works as you would expect it to. And I really do like the image quality. The contrast is really, really good. The screen is extremely good. And yeah, it just performs as it should be. However, the apps themselves are not that stable. And I think they are the main performance kind of hog for the device at the moment. So some optimization for both the EPUB and the PDF reader app is uh, uh, something that I hope we will see in the future. Because, for example, if I start to push the device really, really hard, such as opening up the collected works of Carl Gustav Jung, which is a, well, it says 785, but realistically it's an 800 uh, megabyte uh, document. And I think it has over 11,000 pages or 10,760 something pages. But when you push the device with opening an extremely large document like this one, uh, sometimes it will open it up like this, like super easy. Sometimes it's gonna have a really hard time. So I can't really catch when, uh, what is going on. So in this instance, it's not camera shy and it's performing as a normal e-reader would. So I'm just able to scroll through uh, yeah, 10,844 pages without any problems and it's extremely uh, interactive and reactive. Uh, on other instances, the same document would be able to completely lock down the device and it would just kind of block. So the PDF reader itself as an app, I think has a bit of an issue because when I open the same document in a different reader, uh, for example, what, what was it called? Librera reader, uh, the performance, while it wasn't blistering, it was perfectly normal. It was something that I, what I would expect from uh, a document of that size and a device of that type. Um, the system was able to handle perfectly fine large loads and yeah, it was all stable and normal. So that indicates to me that the system is stable, that the hardware is stable, but that the PDF reader app currently is not as it can run into instances where it becomes increasingly unstable and it would actually even crash in some instances. This is the instability that I was talking about. So the previous document that just worked fine and it took a little bit longer to open. Now that I'm trying to open it, it just crashed. And let's see now, is it gonna open or what's it gonna do? I am again stuck with this kind of 100% loading. So I'm not sure what it is doing. Um, I guess the best way to do it is to just wait for it so that it can kind of uh, finish what it's doing. But yeah, that's the general instability. It's not, um, the, the software is not a hundred percent reliable and it's something that I really hope that actually changes. There we go. It loaded it up and now it actually works as it should be. Okay. So overall the performance I think is okay, uh, perfectly adequate, but I think it's, uh, currently somewhat hindered by the instability of the apps, mainly the PDF reader, the books reader, and some some applications of the notes notes is in the best state currently but it also can run into some kind of hiccups here and there so since this is still an extremely young platform i hope that that's just an indication that it's super young it just came out and it just needs to have its uh you know kind of rough rough edges polished i hope that the coming updates will be addressing these issues and uh, that we will see continued increase in performance and more importantly stability Origin is equipped with a 6.8 inch e-ink screen. I'm not sure completely because I couldn't find the uh, uh, confirmation of this, but since the screen surface isn't glass, that indicates to me that it's probably using a Carta flexible type of screen. And it runs a resolution of 1440 by 1080 with the pixel per inch density of 265. The image is crisp and clean. Even if we're using really, really tiny fonts, the 
image clarity is really good and yeah whether it's fonts or images it's able to display them very very nicely there's very little to no perceivable ghosting going on mainly because the refresh management both in the pdf reader app in the epub uh, in the book reader app and in the note taking app is handled really really well so you will rarely see any type of ghosting going on and even when there is, it's really negligible. But even if you do run into some kind of uh, indication of ghosting, you simply swipe, do swipe down to get the notification or the toolbar, hit the refresh button, it refreshes the screen, and it's there. And that's available to you no matter which mode you are in, so really, really well kind of taught out. The default uh, screen whiteness is of the standard shade of gray, so it's neither brighter nor darker than what we are used to from, you know, standard devices of this type. One thing where uh, Origin really stands out is this little panel here, and it opens up a advanced display panel controls, such as not only do you have control over contrast itself, but you also have the control over the uh, the contrast threshold so that you can actually customize how you exactly want your display to behave and what type of image do you want. And I think these sliders are balanced very nicely. And um, yeah, the minimums are usable, the maximums are usable. So that's a really, really powerful thing to have and a good addition to have on a device like this. As mentioned before, uh, Mobiscribe Origin is equipped with a very nice front light. It is a dual uh, color and intensity controllable front light. So we can go to minimum or maximum and we can adjust between blue and amber colors. Um, the uniformity of the uh, front light is really, really good. Mainly, I think that this frame helps. That's usually the case when a device has a frame like this. It helps with the uh, directing of the front light. So it falls nicely on the screen. The only area where we have a little bit of a fall off is right down here you probably see just a little bit of darkening but even that darkening is quite uniform and you can only truly see it when it's pumped up to the maximum which is very rarely something that you're going to be using in all normal conditions when you're just simply using the front light to brighten things up a little bit it's not something that you kind of notice my only gripe with the front light is that the slider you can't see it here because the conditions are too bright but the minimum value of the brightness of the front light is too high so if you find yourself in completely dark situation let's say you're in a bed and you want to read something or sketch or draw or whatever I find this minimum brightness to be too bright, way too bright. So I hope that they are able to actually change this in one of the coming updates so that we have a bit more of a range um, on the intensity of the brightness, especially as far as the minimum goes, so that it actually goes lower in the brightness so that we can use it in uh, yeah, completely dark environment in a pleasant way. Right now, I find it a little bit too bright. In addition to having uh, yeah, lower minimums of the intensity of the front light, it would also be nice if we had like uh, presets for, you know, day, night, bed or something like that to kind of have uh, one button preset for settings, both for intensity and the color that we prefer. I think that would um, add the functionality just a little bit more to kind of make it more accessible. Reflections are nicely muted down, as you can see, so no sharpness at all, and they are kind of dulled down. Now, these are super extremely strong lights glaring directly here, and I find that the reflections are never a problem. Finally, the snows are melting and the day is longer and I've seen some sunlight as well. So I was able to actually test it out, out light, outside in the sunlight and uh, yeah, overcast and direct sunlight conditions and I never had any problems whatsoever. It's actually the, the blacks become a little bit more contrasty and it's a very, very pleasant um, device to use outside. Overall, I find the screen to be a pleasant experience to use under pretty much any condition. Conditions, coupled with the uniform and flexible front light and an excellent screen contrast and brightness controls, it offers um, a very good reading and writing experience.
I was unable to find a reliable specification info for the Mobiscribe Origin, specifically uh, what type of battery or what capacity of battery does it use. So I used different um, battery apps that actually kind of try to gauge and um, get what the, the capacity of the battery is. And they consistently returned 2850 milliamps. So I'm inclined to believe at this moment that the uh, Mobiscribe Origin is powered by a 2850 milliamp battery. This is not a bright side of the device, unfortunately, at this moment, because um, from a reader side of things, when I was doing the uh, auto reading type of uh, battery test, where I would just let the app kind of read words, in this case, I was using Kindle, word, speech, whatever, the one where it's just reading the words. And with the front light turned off, you're looking at a total estimate of around 10 hours of total battery life. If you crank up that uh, front light to 50%, then that total expectancy drops to 8.33 hours, and it drops further down to 6.25 hours if you crank up the front light all the way to 100%. Certainly not the best, but the consumption dropped even further down when when I was doing my continuous writing test. The writing conditions were Wi-Fi was on, it wasn't downloading or doing anything like that, it was just standby idling, uh, I was writing and the front light was set at the complete minimum. Under such conditions, um, the total battery life estimate is or drops down to five hours. Those are not good results by any means, uh, especially because it has a rather hefty battery. So that leads me to believe that like many other platforms that are, you know, in their infancy, Early versions of operating systems tend to be unoptimized as far as battery consumption goes, so it's entirely possible that there are background processes or something that's simply draining more battery than it should. I think that hardware-wise, these 2850 milliamps should be more than enough to give Origin a much, much better uh, performance in general, because we have other devices that are using Android 8.1 and they're using similar type of batteries and they get much better battery results. And it certainly wouldn't be unheard of that a fresh platform that just got out would actually get dramatic performance and battery life optimizations or gains uh, after one or a few updates. This is something that we've already seen on pretty much every platform there. So I have every reason to believe and hope that this will be the case with the Mobiscribe Origin as well. pen that comes with Mobiscribe Origin is of a Wacom standard pen. It's shaped as a standard, um, yeah, let's say Stadler type of pen. It uses uh, felt tip nibs of a regular standard, so they can be easily exchanged to a different type if you so choose. Uh, there isn't any kind of a button in the middle or anywhere on the pen itself, but it does have an eraser sensor on the back which works really really nicely and it has a bit of a give so if you want to fidget and fiddle around you can do so even though the pen is entirely made out of plastic the design and the build quality aren't cheap by any measure and i quickly found myself thoroughly enjoying writing with that pen it's light it's well balanced which makes it sit very nicely in the hand. It provides good grip and it's really easy to control. The nibs feel great in combination with the screen surface that's here. And basically it feels and it sounds paper-like. Thank you. 
The thing where this pen experience uh, really excels and kind of uh, uh, propels itself above the average is the pressure sensitivity precision. Now, on paper, lots of pens have 4096 levels of pressure sensitivity, like this one, but only a handful are actually able to handle such precision levels in a usable way. And it's not just to, due to the pen uh, itself, it's a combination of the device and the pen and how the things are calibrated to work uh, together. The end result is that uh, Mobiscribe Origin is pretty much the first and currently the only e-ink device that I've encountered that offers a complete pressure sensitivity range uh, for you to actually use. What does this mean? Well, this means that if you use a pressure sensitive brush, if you set the brush thickness, let's say to absolute maximum, like I did here to 15, and you start drawing a stroke, you will have at your disposal from the thinnest possible line here by gradually increasing the pressure, smoothly transitioning to maximum thickness and then smoothly going into a thin thin line this is a very big deal for a writing and a drawing device because it directly translates into i have to say subjectively for me at least for now it is pretty much the reason why mobiscribe origin is becoming slowly but surely one of the best writing experiences that i've had this is something that's truly, truly impressive. This level of control, I simply haven't experienced in any other device. And it's not just for drawing because it really does translate into a uh, uh, comfort of writing and how you, um, yeah, how you write essentially. So this, this type of level of control just introduces a whole new level of uh, comfort and precision and control that you have on a digital e-ink device. Something that I haven't really experienced before, not even on a Remarkable. As mentioned in the pen section, the writing experience on the Origin is pretty much among the best that I have experienced so far. My initial impression when I was doing the unboxing and first impression was that it feels fast. And I was guessing that it would be super fast when compared to the competition. However, Desta test revealed that that's actually not the case. Origin is definitely not among the fastest latency devices out there. It's by no means slow, but it is in the category of 50 plus uh, milliseconds of latency. So I was kind of wondering why did I get that first initial impression and why does it still feel fast? Even when I know that it's not that fast, it feels really, really good. And I think that it comes down to that precision of the pressure sensitivity and the careful balance between the friction and smoothness and the balance of the pen and the resistance and all of these things. I think that they've achieved here something that uh, yeah, it just makes it just a joy to use. Mobiscribe Origin goes to show that speed alone can't compensate for the lack of quality. They obviously focused on quality at the expense of speed, and the end result, for me at least, is when I combine all of the things that I've talked about subjectively, the, this is the nicest and the best writing experience I have had on a digital device so far. I have used and I use a lot of different devices and I do a lot of writing. Only a handful of devices actually make me want to come back to them actively on a daily basis just because I want to use them, just because it feels really good, because you get that satisfying tactile feeling while writing or drawing on a device. Remarkable 2 is definitely one of them, but Mobiscribe Origin is most definitely one of them as well. Notebook functionality um, definitely shows a lot of promise and already now it offers some excellent functionality that puts the origin above the competition. So before I go to the special ones, I mean, let's cover just the uh, basics here. So at your disposal, you have three brushes, pressure sensitive, pressure insensitive, and a paint brush. You have various thicknesses as presets. You're able to set up a custom brush and add it as 
as another uh, kind of brush that will add here as an icon and then you just have a quick access to basically a preset of a brush which is really really cool to have you have the ability to add basic shapes and um, from the colors we don't have any color strokes but we have a gray scale so we have three different shades of gray black white color and something that's called chalk which provides a nice texture for yeah drawing filling things in or whatever you may want to use it for we have your standard eraser selection tool and then we have some things that actually make the mobiscribe origin platform stand out along with the ability to add shapes which i already mentioned and to actually have uh, presets for your brushes that you use most uh, most often you also have the ability to add text boxes, images, and tables, customizable tables as well. All of these are easily customizable, and uh, if you scoff at the thing, it's like, oh yeah, well, why would I need uh, tables, and why is the tables a big deal, or a text box? Well, let me just show you something. So let's say that I wanted to create a template, an organizer for a weekly organizer, for example. So first, I would draw a table and I would stretch it out so that it's full screen here and here there we go and then I can customize it so that it actually does what I want it to do let's say let's go back into here and then I can change my options and decide okay so how many columns how many rows what the color of these want I want it to be what's the thickness of it etc etc so if I set this up so that it's like this for example and I say okay that's fine and then I can go into insert and I can insert a text box here uh, let's just say day. All right, so let's move this guy into a cell and let's resize it the way I'd like it to be. So with the text box selected, I'm going to go into formatting options and I'm going to make it bold and I'm going to make it large. Let's say, well, not that large, a little bit smaller. Let's say maybe 28. Yeah, that's fine. Then I'm going to just create another one over here. And let's say task. Long press for here. Task. It remembers the formatting, so I don't have to do anything. I can just reposition it into here. Now here I would uh, really like it if we had like alignment options like in the middle or to the left or to the right or up, down and middle, you know, standard type of thing, which would actually make this quite, quite easier to do. And let's create a new one here and let's call it done. Okay, so that's something that will definitely fit. And once I start adding text boxes down to the side here and rearrange the, the shape of the grid itself. So for example, I can just touch on the grid and then I can customize that I want uh, these rows to be here. I would like these rows to be there or anything like that. You can actually shape the yeah, columns and rows, everything separately. And once I'm done, I can export this as a PNG and use it as a custom template that was created from scratch on the origin itself. So when I was playing around, one of the end results that I got was my weekly planner that looks like this. And this was entirely created from start to scratch on the Mobiscribe origin. So I never had to go to a computer or anything else. I was able to do everything here offline. I didn't even have to go online. For me, that's very, very powerful. And then you can fill out your weekly schedule according to, uh, yeah, <laughs> the cure. Another aspect that's quite interesting is that when you press create note, um, Origin will ask you, do you want to create a vertical or a horizontal note? And if you create a horizontal note, then it just works really, really good. And out of the box, you have horizontal notebook functionality. So the first time I tested out the notebook functionality, I again, it ran into some 
some kind of instability. And uh, what happened was when I exited the notebook and returned to it, it first rendered in a corrupt way in a portrait mode. And after that, it wouldn't render any content at all. So it became actually corrupt. Um, then I created another one and another one and another one, and I could never reproduce that problem that I first encountered. So on one hand, it's a good thing that I couldn't reproduce and it didn't happen. On another hand, it's not a good thing that it happened in the first place. So again, you know, some stability issues and some of these things are definitely going to be woes of an early platform, which this most definitely is. However, I have to say that when you actually flip it into a horizontal mode, you get to have a lot more freedom as far as writing goes. And it's something that I really, really do like because it's just just feels really really comfortable and it's really cool to kind of see use in a hand and write like this it's it just the format itself lends itself very nicely to be held in hand and kind of uh, written like this I haven't found a way of rotating the user interface or the notebook like this so that I could maybe hold it here by the wider section so use this as a thumb holder hopefully this is something that either I've missed or if not maybe they will add an option so that we can turn it around so that it can actually be in this type of orientation at the moment I can't really do this but I think that this widening section would really lend itself perfectly to provide nice firm hold of the device and while writing in this mode. Very, very nice potential. OCR handwriting to text recognition is especially effective, though you should be aware that the initial conversion is slow, as I initially mentioned. The reason behind it is that it's done locally by the device, not by a cloud, not by cloud servers or anything like that. And it also means that unlike the majority of the devices out there and services out there, on Mobiscribe Origin, you are able to do all of your OCR conversions while offline. Not only that, but once you are converted, the results are persistent, which means that the conversion results and edits, any edits to that conversion that you may have done, they are saved along with the notebook. So after that initial conversion, which does take a long time, every subsequent word search uh, in that notebook is instantaneous and all edits that you have done to the OCR results are retained even re after restarts or power offs. The OCR recognition results are incredibly accurate. It's really, really impressive, but I do hope that they will add an option to enable background OCR recognition so that we can um, choose to enable an option that will let the device actively process OCR recognition data in the background as a background process so that when you return to a notebook after a while or while writing that we can have an in that instantaneous speed it would actually mean quite a lot we're also currently missing an option to uh, do an OCR of an entire notebook currently it's just doing it on a per page basis which definitely isn't handy if you have a notebook where you've taken notes during a lecture or anything like that however there is a workaround for that all you need to do in order to force uh, a whole notebook OCR recognition is that you need to go into the search mode and in the search here you just type in letter A and then you let it do its thing. It's going to take a long time. It takes around half a minute per page of fully written text. Um, the good thing is that uh, it is smart. So it detects if a page has been changed since the last OCR or not. So it's not going to redetect pages that have been already uh, detected previously unless they have been changed. If they've been changed, then it will do redetection. But once it's done, you will able to access all of the recognition uh, pretty much instantaneously. So these were uh, recognized or uh, converted from before. And as you can see, the recognition is instantaneous and really, really good because it says I'm quite interested also to see the exported results of writing to see the quality. I hope that it's nice and good smiley. It even recognized the smiley face and converted it into an uh, emoji. Okay, a bit over one minute left. This will be the last test and then I can start filming the review material and then editing dot 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 few dot 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 okay here we go dot 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 
I didn't edit it any, in any way, shape or form. That's what it recognized by default without going online or anything like that. And look at the scribbles. I am very, very impressed by the OCR capabilities and the functionalities of the uh, MobiScribe Origin. It's very, very usable in real world conditions. Even as it is now, if you are prepared and you keep in mind that the initial conversion will take time, I think that you will be able to devise a workflow that suits your needs and fits your workflow. And while it's not ideal, it's certainly very usable in a real world situation to do that search and A thing and let the device do the OCR conversion of the entire notebook. Because for me, at least, it's definitely worth the weight required because what it enables you is something really really amazing OCR converted results so let's just go here they can be saved as uh, text files uh, but again here I wish that they would uh, incorporate an option to actually export uh, all of the pages so that you can have current page or all OCR'd pages as a text file. That would be a very, very good addition. And we can just have a toggle here, like a radio button, current page, selection of pages, or all pages. Or you can also use this icon here, which would then insert all of this recognized text into a text box and into a notebook. So again, something that's quite uh, unique and usable. And there's more of good news and extremely good functionalities. And we can find them in these two icons here. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, MobiScribe Origin has the ability to bookmark pages in a notebook normally, just a normal book bookmark as you would normally use it. But they also introduce something that they call note mark. So not a bookmark, but a note mark, which is this icon here. And this means that I can add a note mark like a tag system or a hashtag, if you will. So if I added a tag here that would be, I don't know, uh, my chapter, let's go here. Chapter. Yes, and then I add it. I could, and uh, now I added a tag of my chapter to this page. Now I can add another tag, so I can use several tags per page. It doesn't have to be just one. But the thing that's really good is let's now go to another page here as well. And then I add another tag here. Now here's the thing where the note mark could be improved. Um, I've already added a tag and this notebook contains a tag. It would be good that I can just have an option of clicking and you reusing an existing tag. At this moment, I have to remember that it's my, and then it's gonna tell me. I have to type something, but if I didn't start with an M, it would give me an indication of another tag that's also been used here. But unless I remember the, the letter that it's starting with, I won't see it. So I think it would be a good idea to actually have a list of used tags and then just tap on this. And then I'm using my chapter and I'm tagging this one like that too. So this is incredibly useful because when you go into the search option here, you will notice that we can search by bookmarked pages. So these are my bookmarks. So if I chose to, I could uh, bookmark each new chapter of my notebook. In this case, reader, note taking, etc. Or in this search box, while uh, I was typing a letter, so you can certainly do a word search in a notebook, you can also type in a note mark. And if I type in the one that I said, which was uh, my, uh, what was it called? And here's the problem. It would be good if, it, if I knew what it was called. So I forgot here. So I have to go back into a page and recall. So this is a practical example of where it would be good to have that listing of existing tags so that I can just tag and filter by, uh, select a note mark and filter by those in the search results. But even so, if I remember of my chapter, there we go, okay. So if I go back into search and I type in my chapter, it will filter out only the pages that have been uh, marked with the note mark or the tag 
my chapter. Incredibly powerful and useful, not ideal. I think that it definitely can be improved, especially by exposing these existing tags or note marks so that we can more easily access them. But once these things are kind of ironed out, I think this system is going to be an absolute winner. This is an excellent and a very, very powerful concept that basically future proofs your notebooks in a very significant way. Because it means that even if your notebook over time grows to be extremely large and messy, if you remember to use the bookmarks and note marks as you're creating your notebook, you will be able to quickly and easily find what you're looking for without any effort. That's very powerful. As I said, the overall system is extremely young and the note marking system is also young and will benefit uh, from more user feedback to make it more usable and smooth it out some more a little bit. The most notable examples are the ones that I already talked about that, it, that we should be able to see existing note marks and uh, when adding or when doing a search because that's going to make it a lot easier. Finally, another first that the uh, notebook system on the Mobiscribe Origin is that the system allows you to save and back up your notes or notebooks in their native format. This, I cannot stress enough how big of a deal this is, at least for me. As far as I'm concerned, this is a major change because it makes uh, backups and redundant backing up extremely easy and powerful. It's extremely easy to transfer from one uh, Mobiscribe device to another device without losing anything, even the, I, I assume, the OCR results as well, because you can simply copy the notebook, raw notebook files onto your SD card or onto your computer when you hook it up via the USB cable. I think that's absolutely fantastic. Of course, needless to say, you can export as a PDF normally, but this native format is amazing. No PCs and computers and Macs, nobody can use and nobody can read that native format, but as a backup solution or transferring or whatever it may be for, uh, yeah, basically keeping your notebooks safe in their native format, that's a big, big plus. Overall, while the platform is still in its infancy, it's fragile and it needs some more work to strengthen it up, what is already there and what the potential is, is very, very impressive and it's already usable in a real world situation. It might not be everybody's cup of tea, but for me personally and hopefully many others like me, any of these existing features uh, would be a much needed breath of fresh air on any of the competitors platforms, let alone when you have all of them combined on a small, charming package like this. That's a big deal.